To maximize productivity in a small business, it's important to leverage a user-friendly project management software like Teamwork, which allows you to collaborate with up to five users and engage on two project workflows completely for free. Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. And if you're a new visitor here, then my name's Stuart and I'm excited you could join us today. Now in this project management tutorial for beginners, I'm gonna guide you through how to use and make the most of Teamwork, which is an easy to use project management software that is completely free for small teams. Okay, now just quickly before we launch into Teamwork, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to grow your small business online. And with that quick note out the way, let's go ahead and get started with this small business project management software called Teamwork. <music> Okay, so first things first, what we need to do is head over to teamwork.com and you'll arrive at this page. Then what we want to do is navigate up to pricing. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, we're going to focus on Teamwork's free plan as this is sufficient enough for small businesses and small teams, especially if you're looking to get started with project management and you don't have too much experience. The reason we recommend Teamwork is because what we've found is Teamwork has the most straightforward user interface, making it ideal for beginners that don't know too much about project workflows and project management. It's a great place to get started if you're looking to better manage your teams and enhance collaboration and engagement for your small teams project. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get started with the free plan. Then here, all we need to do to simply create an account is add our information in here. Now you also have the option to sign up with Google. And for us, we prefer to keep everything in one place under our Google account. So what we're gonna do is sign up with our Google account. However, if your organization does not use Google, for example, they do not use Google Workspace, formerly known as G Suite, then you can go ahead and fill out this information and then just come down and click get started for free. So what we're gonna do is sign up with Google. And here, what we're gonna do is select our Google account and then enter our company name and phone number. And I'm happy with my information. You can see that I have my work email address here, full name, company name, and business phone number, then I'm just gonna select get started for free. Here you just wanna simply select the best option that represents your business. For us, we're gonna select web development agency and then come down and click next. And here you have the option to select a sample project to get started with, but for now what we're gonna do is click skip and then skip again because we're gonna show you how to invite team members within the Teamwork dashboard. And here we are within Teamwork. Now you have the option to navigate through these helpful tabs if you like, but for us, we're gonna exit out of that one and then navigate up to home. So as you can see, we're currently on our first project, which is a default project. So what we're gonna do is navigate up to home and then come down here and click dismiss. And within your home section of your Teamwork account, and before we go ahead and actually invite your other team members to join you on Teamwork, and before we create projects and tasks within Teamwork, what we wanna do is actually navigate through these important elements on the left-hand side. So firstly, on the left-hand side, you can see that we have My Work, and this is already selected. Basically, this is where you can see up-to-date information in regards to activity that have been happening on certain tasks that are relevant to you. Then below My Work, we have My Projects, and this is basically where you can manage all your projects that you're a part of. Now, within the free plan that we're currently using, you only have access to create two projects. So if you wanna upgrade and create additional projects, Projects, then you will have to upgrade to a paid plan. Then we can also navigate over here and create a new project or we can simply click up here to create a new project and other elements up here which we'll navigate through shortly. Then below my projects we have activity and this is basically your activity feed. These are up-to-date activities that are relevant to you. Then below activity, we have dashboards, and this is just a beautiful visual overview of what's happening within your account. 
You can see basic metrics over here and you can see active tasks within your projects. You can also go ahead and customize your dashboard if you like. Then below dashboards, we have unread comments. Essentially, if there are any unread comments that are relevant to you within your projects, then you will see those comments in here. Then we have unread messages, again, similar to unread comments. This is where you're gonna see unread messages. Then we have events. And under events, this is basically where you can go ahead and add a new event or you can manage your events if there are any coming up. So that is a brief overview of your home section of your Teamwork account. Basically, this is where you can manage and see all the activity that is happening within your Teamwork account. All right, now the next vital step is to invite your team members to join you on Teamwork because what is a project management tool if you can't collaborate with other team members? So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select people and navigate across to invite users. Now you can also navigate up to this plus icon and come down to this quick add and invite here. Now you also have access to companies and teams. And this is where you can also manage all the people that are part of your Teamwork account. And as you can see, I am the only user that is part of this account. So what I'm going to do is navigate up to invite users and then enter the first name of a team member that I want to invite and then their last name and then just simply add their email address here. And then once you've added your first user, you'll notice that you can add additional users if you like. Then once you've added all your users, come down and select which company they belong to. So for us, this is going to be a team member. So we're gonna go ahead and select Cindio Media because they are part of our team and we want them to engage on our projects with us. You also have the option to add a new company. Then you can select if they are a standard user or if they are a collaborator. This individual is going to be a collaborator because they are going to work on projects with us. Then come down and select next, select projects. Here you can come across and simply add this user or users to specific projects. So for example, I could go ahead and add this user to all projects or I could select all projects within Cindio Media, which is the only company that we have that's connected to this account. So all of the projects under Cindio Media, or I could just select a specific project. I can also come down here and select none or add a new project. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and select next, write a message. Here you have the option to send a message to your new users, but I'm gonna leave that for now and come down and click send invite to one person. And as you can see, sending invite to Sam Smith. And that is how you can simply invite users and team members to join you on your Teamwork account and also invite these users to collaborate with you on specific projects within your account. And again, you can manage your users here. So what I'm gonna do now is head back to home and guide you through how to create and manage projects, task lists, and tasks. Again, under projects, we can go ahead and add a project over here or we can navigate up to this plus icon and select project. However, we also have projects up above next to our home section. Again, similar to my projects under the home section, you have access to your active projects here and you can also go ahead and add a project. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new project. Here you want to simply name your project and then down here you want to add a simple description about your new project. You can also see we have formatting options available up here. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a brief description. And once you've gone ahead and added a brief description, again, you can use these formatting options if you like, then come down and click add project. Now projects within Teamwork can be broken down into three areas. We have the project itself, within the project we have task lists, and then within task lists, we have tasks. So again, this project layout or structure is very similar to the project management tools that we've discussed on this channel before. However, what you'll find is a lot of these project management tools just have different names for the different stages within their projects. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a task list. So first, think about your task list name and think about the tasks that need to be completed within that task list. So for example, for the purpose of this tutorial, our project is called Web Design Client A. So this is for a specific client. Now this is a complete web design project. So this task list could be, for example, website pages. Then I can come down here and add notes if I like. Again, I have the formatting options available up here. So if I want to add any notes regarding this task list, 
I can do that down here. Then we have privacy. This is where you can select who can view this task list. So for example, everybody on the project is already selected. If I select this, I can choose everyone within Syndio Media, or I can go everybody on the project. I can also select teams if I have any teams. Now, as you can see, I'm the only individual that is part of this project. And because I can't see my other team member here that I added earlier, what I'm going to do is navigate back to people once I exit out of this one. So before I go ahead and add this task list, we also have milestone and defaults, but we're not going to talk too much about these two components within task lists because this is just a beginner's tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and add this task list. And as you can see, just to quickly break it down, you can see that within Cindio Media, which is the company that's associated with this teamwork account, we have two projects. Now we have web design client A selected, and we've just gone ahead and created a task list called web pages. So within our task list, we have zero tasks. Now what we need to do is go ahead and actually create a task. But before we do that, what we're going to do is navigate back up to people and navigate down to Sam's profile. So select Sam. This is the new user that we added earlier. Remember, we added them to one project. They're currently part of this project here. But what we want to do is add them to our new project called Web Design. So what I'm going to do is navigate over to Edit Sam and then navigate across to Permissions and then come down to Give Automatic Access to All Future Projects. And then I'm going to come down here to Projects and click Edit and select Web Design Client A, the new project we just created. And then come down and select Finished. Then again, select Update. And you can see that our new user that we added earlier is now part of two projects. So now I can simply click projects to head back to my projects or I can select one of these two. So I want to go back to web design client A and then navigate back to tasks. And as you can see, we're back to where we are. We have one task list with zero tasks. So to create a task, all we need to do is select add task. And think about all the tasks that need to be done within your task list. So for us, website pages need to be completed. So what pages do we have in this website? Well, we have a contact page. And I'm going to come down here to who should do this. And I'm going to select Sam Smith. This is going to be his task. And then I can select a start date and a due date if I like. So I'm going to go ahead and select seven days. So this task starts in seven days. Then I can navigate over to due date and select due date and now I can go another week from the start date. So modify the dates based on each task. Now I can also notify this individual by email. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we have other options up here. For example, I can add a description. I can add attachments. I can also change the privacy. So who can see this task? Again, I can select all of us. So it would even be easier to select everybody on the project. Now, if you're working with clients, then you might not want them to see the entire project and every single task. So what you can do is select different tasks to be viewed by different people. So basically, you're adjusting the permission based on the task level or the task list level. Then we have priority, low, medium, high. And then we have more advanced elements that we're not going to discuss in this tutorial, but you can play around if you have the time. So you can set a reminder and you can set tags if you like. Then once you've finished adding your task, come down and select Save Changes. And up here you can see that we now have our task list and one task under our website pages, our task list, which is allocated to Sam. Now you can come down here and add another task if you like by simply adding your new task just like we showed you up here. Or you can come down and select Cancel. So breaking down projects one last time, you can see that we have this project selected, Web Design Client A. Then we have one task list called website pages and within this task list we have one task and you can see all the information about this task here and we can simply add another task within this task list or we can go ahead and add a new task list. Now with your project you can also navigate up to list over here and this just shows that we are currently viewing our project in a list layout. We can select down to board. And with board, basically, you can choose to view your projects with a board layout. This is for those that prefer a more visual representation of their projects. We can also navigate back up here and come down to Gantt. And you can see that our project is now in a Gantt layout. So if I navigate back and head back to a list view, 
Okay, now just quickly before we finish up, I just want to navigate through the important elements for each project. So currently we're on the tasks tab. This is where you're going to spend most of your time when it comes to constructing and putting projects together, creating task lists and tasks. Then we have overview. This is an overview of your activity. This gives you a more visual overview. Then we have milestones. If you've set up any milestones with your tasks, then you're going to see those here. Then we have messages. You can create messages and see your messages regarding this project. Then we have files. If you've uploaded any files or anyone else that is part of this project and they've uploaded files, you can access the files here. Then we have time. Again, this is for your time entries. We have notebooks. If you want to add notes regarding this project, then we have links. Again, these are links that are associated to this project. Then we have comments, people and settings. With settings, you can come down and enable or disable some of the features within your projects. So for example, we don't have milestones and we also don't want messages. And we also don't want to track time. We just want to have basic tasks, files, notes if people have notes to leave behind, links and comments. Then you have general settings over here and we have integrations for if you want to integrate important apps with your teamwork account. And then we have notifications and you can enable or disable the settings regarding notifications people will get when specific activities have been done for this particular project. So remember with the free plan you can create up to two project workflows and you can add up to five users to collaborate and engage with you on your teamwork account. And you have the option to upgrade to a paid plan at any time if you decide that this is a great project management tool for your team. However, you do need to access more capabilities and more features and functions within Teamwork, or maybe you need access to more projects or you need more team members to join your Teamwork. So take the time to go through the plans if you need to upgrade to a paid plan. But that is a basic overview of Teamwork and how you can make the most and get started with Teamwork for your small business. And there we have it guys, that is it for this comprehensive overview of Teamwork's free plan for small teams. Now if you have any questions about this Teamwork tutorial, make sure to pop them down below, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And that way, I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.